Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday, midweek Wednesday. Um, we have a uh, good show planned for you today. A couple things to get to. We have two items that uh, don't look like they have anything in common, yet they do. And let's see if you could figure it out as we do them. So let's get started right away. Okay, first up, my buddy Big Vic. Everybody loves Big Vic. You know, he, he won a contest uh, with Double Cola and he... Uh, he sent me a nice double cola sticker and a pencil. He says, like, I can't use more, you know, like, I don't have enough pencils. But look at that blue eraser. That's, I think, the only pencil I have with a blue eraser. Very cool. And he sent a nice handwritten note. I won't show it because, uh, you know, I didn't talk to him before. But he said uh, he wrote this. And, and let me tell you, his handwriting, very legible. And uh, and you could tell he did a, a nice job in writing it. And he said, he jokingly said, look, I, I took a chance. I didn't even use a backer board. But uh, we all are, are trying to make a better, uh, do better in handwriting. But thanks so much for this, Vic. Really appreciate it. Okay, for today's project, you are not going to believe this. I went to a, a show once, and this guy had a bucket of tools, and every one of them was painted with this kind of gray paint or something. And, and uh, you know, the tools weren't expensive, but... Uh, you know, he had this in there, and I said, you know, this would be a good project because you know how I always tell you about paint. I'm a big advocate of painted tools. I love when tools are painted because it protects the tool, and it's easy enough to remove if you wanted to uh, change it. The problem is this is plastic. Now, paint removing paint on plastic, a little different. You can see this kind of, I don't know what kind of paint is on it's it looks like a latex or something but it's he probably just did it to identify i don't know what but we are going to work on this today you know what this is it's a uh this is i believe it's a uh, it's a companion sears companion you see that and uh a lot of times they were made by stanley but this one here japan it was made in japan these were actually very good and this one works nice and smooth ratcheting screwdriver drill some kind of black on the cap here i don't know we're going to do this over and uh this should be fun this paint when you're taking it off plastic you got to be very careful a lot of times like this stuff here you, sh you could scrape off with something here so you can see here i'm scraping this off with my nail so we're going to try and peel this off and see what's underneath here okay we got that paint off that came off quite easily a few minutes of scraping with my fingernail but um we still have white paint spots you see those those <laughs> you know i use a uh what won't come off with the fingernail what i like to do is take a single edge razor blade get right under the tip there and try and snap it off you see what we just did there and just each one of these just there we go that'll come off like that you know and you just don't scratch the plastic if you if you can avoid it Again, at a uh, 90 degree angle, just hold it and, and just pop that that uh, little paint off there. And, you know, these these little speckles sometimes uh, give you more trouble than you think. But uh, over here, some more. See that? And again, 90 degree, kind of scrape off that paint and hope that it's not too embedded there. Okay, and we're going to clean up more. But we'll you make sure all the paint is off. For the cap here... I'm going to use some uh, acetone and uh, no, you know what? I'm going to use lacquer thinner. I think that'll take that black right Now here we are. We're going to use some lacquer thinner. Anytime using any chemicals, any chemicals, I don't care what it is, WD-40, anything, always good to put a chemical resistant glove on. The black ones are better than the blue ones, but here we have a little lacquer thinner on here and that gets rid of, look, look at this comes right off because it's chrome plating and nothing really sticks to a good chrome plating you know especially so okay so now we have that now we just have to uh now we just have to clean it up and and the reason i got this really because the bits believe it or not the bits are, are <laughs> harder to get than some of these screwdrivers are and this one had quite a few bits in it and they looked in decent shape so that's why i bought it so uh, we're just going to do a quick cleanup on this, and I'll tell you why. Uh, it's nice. It's a great user, you know, so I'm not going to go nuts, and we're going to clean it up, and uh, let's get to Now, that. let me show you how to take these apart in case you ever come across one of these and you wanted to take it apart. Um, obviously, the rear cap comes off, and then uh, underneath the rear cap that screws in is this little thing. It has a little slot across. You could put a screwdriver in 
this one here is loose already there's a spring under it be very careful that that spring don't launch across the shop because uh anytime there's a spring it's under pressure okay so there we go we take that out the spring gets removed there's a little cap on the top of that there's nothing else in there okay now you have to take off the top here we unscrew this cap here this cap will unscrew coming off the top the front when it does you'll see there's a little brass uh if you pull it out this little brass collar with a gear on it okay that's one there's usually two of these pull that out like this now this sleeve will come out this way and to get it out what you have to do is this little selector switch you got to push it down and push it down and slide the sleeve over okay okay just push that down until the sleeve there we go see how the sleeve is moving over it now again that you hold this down there's a little spring it's not really a spring it's just a uh, kind of a leaf under there you see it here see that that's your selector switch put that down now there's two little levers you can see how this works now there's two little levers here these little metal levers pull out and that's how you can remove this remove those little levers take a little screwdriver here we have like a little jeweler screwdriver place it under lift it up one goes there remember and it's always good to videotape this because if you haven't uh, forget how it goes in you could remember how it goes now that'll pull out like this and now this gets pushed forward and then you flip over the screwdriver and you'll see this little there's a little clip here and this is where you'll see one side has an opening on this side the other side is kind of closed so if you take one of these dental picks these dental picks come in so handy you could buy them all over harbor freight has them everybody but you put it in there and you slide this out okay and when you slide it out like this okay that little half moon clip that will allow this whole assembly to come out now you see there's a nut in the bottom there that holds that shaft on and i believe there's a special tool a regular nut driver is too wide the ones i have anyway you'd need a thin wall nut driver to hold that and spin this off but um i this is all i need to do to get to clean it in here i'm going to clean it up put it back together and i'm going to uh, take some of the scratches out of here now to take the front off we're going to take this retaining clip there's a retaining clip here that comes off like that the little spin collar comes off it's nothing but an aluminum collar there's two washes that are on top of that that come off okay and then there's the spring mechanism now the spring mechanism catches you could see here underneath there you want to take a pair of pliers and uh, pull that off so now that you clean oiled and lubricated all the working mechanism you take a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go inside here with a q-tip okay and clean the inside here now this is this is you'll see a lot of times when you're trying to get this to be translucent or look good a lot of the dirt is from inside here that's why it won't look too good so clean this out with alcohol first get it nice and clean and you'll see just keep running q-tips through until you don't have any more dirt now when we're satisfied that the inside is clean we're going to take some plastics okay mcguire's plastics i love this polish for all all things plastic it don't take a lot but uh we'll put a little bit on a damp piece of uh shop cloth here this is damp shop cloth and we'll buff this now if this if the uh, case was scratched up if the handle was scratched up you'd have to go with sandpaper first and work your way down the grits but this one wasn't it was painted like I always say I like painted surfaces so all we're really doing here is just going to polish it up and uh, you just go around this for a while and then you'll buff it clean with the uh, a, a piece of dry shop cloth and uh, and that should be good now you know my favorite part. Remember what this ratcheting screwdriver looked like before we started. And we're calling this project done. Uh, another nice outcome on this one, huh? You see how I like painted handles? Look how that handle came out. You know, I, I just gave it a, a quick going over with some plastics. You know, it's, uh, it's a nice handle. There was no reason to cover it. I had to take the chrome off the back. 
uh, take it down to a polish because the chrome was starting to peel, but you could see here that's an acceptable finish in the back. Uh, everything works nice. I brush finish this so it won't show fingerprints and chip up. Uh, works uh, beautiful. Here we have it in the lock position. Uh, you could see here and uh, it's important when you're lubricating this to use the right lubricant. I like TriFlow because it's very slippery. Um, how this works, there's a bunch of bits in here. There are different ones. There are screw bits. There are uh, drill bits. So what I like to do is storm that you can see which bit is watch facing up. And uh, let me show you how this works. Now many of these uh, type of uh, screw drills work the same. And you can see this is the type of bit they take. This one here is a drill bit. What you do is you place it into the top here and you pull back. And when you pull back, there's a, it is a spring. You might have to collapse the drill. There's a spring here that when you pull back on the collar, it will allow you to place this in and you just turn it until it locks. You'll see it'll turn and then it'll lock in only one position. Then when you let it go, it is in there. It can't come out. And uh, to release it, you just reverse it. You pull the collar back and slip it out. Uh, but you do have to give it that turn until it locks in. Let me show you how this drill will work. Here is a small piece of plywood mounted into the vise. And when you take this drill and you would press it here. And by just pushing in a couple times, this drill makes a, a, a quick hold. And that's much quicker than you trying to find your... Uh, your cordless drill and put a drill bit in. You can see it makes a, a nice hole, one, two, three, and, uh, and a nice clean hole. These do work well. I don't know why people don't use them anymore. And then we could take this bit off of here, just like that, and we could put in a screw bit here. Again, giving it a turn. Now we have a Phillips screw bit. Let me show you how that works. Here we have a, uh, a Phillips, like a drywall screwdriver exterior. We're going to put this on drive, which you push this all the way up forward like that. That's to drive it. Again, placing it on the tip here, picking a hole and holding the collar here, just pushing it in. And there we go. Now, if you had to remove that, you would push this back to the back here and just remove it like this. Okay, so it, it's a still uh, would be useful today. I like them. Okay, so that was our first item. Uh, like I told you, there was two items today that have something in common, but uh, it's going to be difficult to find out what it is. Let me show you what the second item okay, is. Okay, our next item is this lovely emergency flashing lamp. And if you look under here, you could see here, I'm going to get the light just right so you could see it here. It's made by, can you see that? It's called a uni lamp and it's made by Dorman Traffic Products uh, Limited. And they're out of Southport, England. Okay, so this is from uh, across the pond. Beautiful unit. And what it is, it's an emergency light. What you do is you give it a, a little turn to the left. And that activates the light. And you can see it's a strobe in there. It's a six-volt strobe. And if to uh, to access it, uh, you open this up like this. And here's the battery. It uses a uh, six-volt can battery. Okay, that fits right in there. And... Uh, and then you just line this up again to put it on, just like this, close it, turns it on, a little turn on, off, lovely. These things are bulletproof, they're used in all kinds of weather conditions, great to keep in the car. Now you're wondering, look at that beautiful fluted lens, right? I mean, just beautiful, I love these things. So you're saying, okay, so what does this have in common with this? Okay, they're both kind of like an amber, uh lens kind of thing but that what do you think these two have in common think about it well both of these will be given away at jacktown that's right jacktown in may both of these will be given away to uh somebody who shows up there for our meet and greet okay so there you see what those two items have in common i'm sure that uh you wouldn't have figured out if I didn't tell you. And um, there's going to be a lot of people going to Jacktown. A lot of people on the fence, but they decide they're going. Ken, the Lantern guy, is going to be there. We got uh, a lot of YouTube creators. 805 Road King, he's always there. You know, he's always great to see to see him. He always has a nice display going. A small engine mechanic, Mike. Mike, and I don't know why he calls his channel Small Engine Mechanic when most of the engines he works on, you need a forklift. <laughs> 
He works on the biggest engines I've ever seen in my life, yet small engine mechanic. I would like to see what Mike calls a big engine. Anyway, it's going to be a ton of people. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you can make it, keep it in mind. Bangor, Pennsylvania. And uh, we'll be talking about that more. I think it's uh, to the middle of May. You're going to love it. Uh, anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. See you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye.